Alrighty, hello there. My name is Gabby Paez and I work in school and library marketing at Abrams. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Mi pronombre es ella. I wanna start by acknowledging the Munsi Lenape who are the traditional custodians of the land on which I work from in Manhattan, New York. And I recognize their continuing connection to the land and its resources. I encourage everyone to find out whose land you're on using the native land digital site and support the native community around you. Thank you all for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. This session is being recorded and you'll be able to find the link to the archive footage in the Abrams booth later today. Please feel free to jump into the chat to interact with us or just to say hi. I am so excited to be here today alongside author Ashley Latimer. Ashley is a writer, producer, and director focused on creating work that supports and celebrates young people of all ages. Her debut picture book, Francis Discovers Possible is an ode to self-acceptance, modeling for readers of all ages what possible might mean in their own lives. It's garnered some pretty impressive blurbs from some folks you might be familiar with, Julie Murphy, Rick Riordan, and Ashley C. Ford. Welcome, Ashley. The floor is yours. Thank you, Gabby. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm going to start off with a reading. So um, Francis Discovers Possible is about a little girl named Francis who gets fat shamed at school um, and is bullied for her weight and she, how she overcomes that with the help of her Baba and their shared love of words. So they go to the park and he mentions possible at one point and she starts to wonder what that is. And they walk through the park searching for the different meanings of possible. Um, she wonders if it's like an airplane flying in the sky and how it's held up. Um, and so after she sees all of these things that possible might mean, um, she, uh, the floor will pick up. Francis thought that possible would be one thing, but suddenly it seemed like lots of things. There was possible in dandelions and in scooping air into your lungs for a wish, possible in puppies in the squishes of their tummies and how they're always ready to play, possible like the wind dancing leaves to a new place. Possible made Francis feel warm and big, like fat before Tabitha made it cold and Jericho made it small. Possible made her want to take up space and share her words and wish and dance and play. Because if puppies and wishes could be possible, maybe Francis was possible too. Francis reached up and tugged on Baba's sleeve. Baba, I think I'm ready for the swings, said Francis. And she was. So the journey to writing Francis Discovers Possible started for me back in 2018 when one of my friends who is a children's librarian made, wrote a thread on Twitter about the lack of positive fat representation in picture books, and also some of the examples where fat characters are represented really harmfully in picture books. And um, that was the first time that I had really considered um, this lack of representation in this age group. I, when I was very young, I was skinny. And so I saw myself in books pretty immediately. Um, but I also started getting messages really early on um, about why I should dislike my body or feel uncomfortable in my body. And so particularly when I hit middle school and my body got bigger, um, I suddenly felt like I disappeared from a lot of the media that I was consuming. And if I did see myself, it was usually as the funny best friend or the butt of the joke. Um, but because I didn't encounter that until I was a middle schooler, I, again, hadn't really thought about the, these positive messages not being in picture books. And when I saw this thread, I went back and thought about how early I received those negative messages. And I immediately was like, oh my gosh, if I had seen positive messages to counteract that just as early as I started seeing negative messages, then maybe I wouldn't have had such a difficult time um, once I got older and, um, and had this new body. And I think it would have been a lot easier to deal with. Um, so initially, uh, this book started as an alphabet primer. I wanted to show fat people of all sizes and abilities and ethnicities doing activities that we are often subtly or not so unsubtly told that we can't or shouldn't do. Um, so like swimming and dancing. Um, and 
you know, just being out in the world, having full lives. Um, but my agent encouraged me to find a narrative way into this story. And that's how Francis came to be. Um, and at now we have this book. Um, so that's, that's basically just a little bit of a history about Francis. Thank you, Ashley. So now I've got some questions for you. Before diving into the world of Kid Lit, you worked in theater and you've won two Tony Awards for your roles as producer for The Inheritance and for Once on This Island. What is it like to go from bringing stories to life on stage to telling them on the page? And I'm curious if your background in theater, particularly children's theater, informed your approach to picture books. Definitely. I One of the reasons that I am so thankful to have had a career in theater before this is because theater is a completely collaborative art form. Um, you are almost, from the moment that a writer first shares, or the playwright first shares their work with the rest of the team, it's collaboration from that point forward. And so I think that particularly working on picture books, which is probably the most collaborative um, of book forms, uh, that really enabled me to just like release uh, my work and not be precious about it and to look for opportunities to really collaborate. Um, one of the biggest differences is that when I wrote Frances, um, she didn't have a stated ethnicity. Um, but because uh, Shaz, the illustrator, is Persian, we um, made her Persian as we went through the illustration process and Papa also became Baba. And um, that very much felt almost like a theatrical experience for me because that happens all the time in creating new work um, on the stage where you find new things in rehearsal or an actor makes a choice or someone hears a certain musical motif that then that turns into a whole new scene or a new character uh, or a new song. Um, so I think collaboration is definitely the biggest impact that theater made and also thinking about visuals so much. I really, one of the reasons that I wanted Francis's story to be a picture book is because I wanted kids to really be able to see themselves. Um, I think sometimes there's kind of been a little bit of a micro trend towards char where characters are described as um, plus size or fat uh, positively on the page. But then when um, fan art comes out or an adaptation is made, that doesn't stay and I wanted um, Francis's appearance to be undeniable. I wanted kids to know that they can see themselves. And I wanted also adults who are reading um, reading along with, with their kids or, or students um, to be able to see themselves as well. And I think theater definitely impacted that. And then working with kids in children's theater has just always like made me excited about making things for kids. <laughs> I love learning all of these little like background tidbits, especially how Papa became Baba. I think that's incredibly sweet. Uh, one thing that is very clear from the first page is how much you and Francis love metaphors and similes, which is something I adore about you both. The story goes, that was usually a warm word, like belly rubs for Francis's puppy, or like cuddling up to read a book with mama and using mama's fluffy arm as the best pillow. And later in the book, Francis wonders if possible looked like planting and how long it takes, how it takes a long time to grow. Maybe possible slap, slap, slapped like double dutch and kept you on your toes. Share with us a little bit about your writing process. How did these comparisons come to you? Were there different iterations that preceded that we preceded than what we see in the finished book? Yeah, so um, a lot of the, the, the story did change a lot during the writing, but a lot of the comparisons and the ideas of what possible might mean and linking that to fat um, have been there since some of the earliest drafts of this narrative edition of the book. Um, I, having worked with kids, I have experienced often, especially with younger kids, how they don't always have the language to understand things if you just use you know, spare words to speak to them. But when you connect it to something they're already familiar with, that is often a really effective way to teach them about new concepts. Um, and 
when I was directing a production of Little Women once where the actor who was playing young Lori was only 10. And um, of course, Lori is supposed to already be exhibiting kind of crush feelings for Joe. And there was one scene where it was just falling fully flat. And I asked them, you know, what's your favorite thing in the world? And they said Legos. And I said, okay, for Lori hanging out with Joe, like, imagine if she had all of the Legos in the world, like, how would you feel about going over to her house? And he was like, I'd want to go there every day. Um, and so, you know, trying to explain the concept of like a crush or love to a 10 year old, pretty difficult, but comparing it to something that they know, um, he immediately made the connection and the whole scene changed. And I definitely tried to bring that to the book. Um, I also, when I first sat down, like I'm a very visual person. And so I thought back to, especially when I was younger, like things that I experienced or watched that made me feel fully like alive and vibrant that I maybe lost or felt like I couldn't participate in when I got older. Um, and when I was little, I uh, lived in a predominantly black neighborhood right outside Atlanta. And so Double Dutch, for example, was super popular in my neighborhood. And um, I have never been coordinated enough for that, but I still <laughs> felt like I got to like be part of like the celebration of it. Um, and that was a really vibrant memory for me that I feel like incorporated, incorporated a lot of those like senses as well. So um, so that particular example, I was definitely pulling from that. I adore hearing the theater and childhood translations into Francis and your picture books. So thank you for sharing that. You can give picture books. They have this way sometimes of being subtly subversive, challenging longstanding conventions or societal norms. When readers meet Frances, we see that she is a person who only has positive feelings or associations with the word fat. And then we meet Frances's wonderful Baba, who has incredible emotional intelligence, and he sees that his daughter is grappling with something. Tell us about these choices you made when it came to language and depictions of adults in a child's life as you crafted Frances's story. Yeah, so one of the things that was really important to me um, in this was portraying a fat uh, father who is comfortable in his body. Um, you know, we, we don't have Baba's backstory, but I definitely um, imagined that he must have had to go through a similar kind of journey. Um, and I have definitely, one of the benefits of working in children's theater for so long is that I've gotten to see uh, a lot of amazing parenting moments and I've gotten to develop a lot of relationships with families. And I have watched as, you know, parents who struggled with their own body or, or, or appearance or and their feelings about their bodies, um, once their kids were born, they were like, I'm not passing this on to my kid. I'm gonna make this conscious choice. Even if I'm still struggling with this, I'm gonna work on that. And I'm going to make sure that I'm giving my kid a different picture. And um, someone asked me in a different interview uh, why I chose um, for this to be B Baba instead of, you know, Francis's mom. Um, and a big reason was because uh, obviously we, we still need more uh, representation for fat women as well. But I remember growing up and the only depictions I ever saw of fat men, especially dads, was as this kind of like bumbling, uh, inept, um, like dad on sitcoms with this like really like haggard, competent <laughs> wife who is always taking care of everything. And that has not been, I'm, I'm, as an adult, my experience of um, many dads <laughs> um, or especially ones who are plus size. And I wanted to really portray um, a, a dad who is loving and emotionally intelligent and competent and engaging with this directly um, with his daughter. I think that somehow makes me love Baba more, which I didn't <laughs> think was possible. Uh, but at the back of the book, you offer up a great author's note. In it, you touch on a number of themes, including the idea that fat people are worthy of taking up space. And we see this, conf uh, this concept reflected in Shahrazad Maidani's whimsical illustrations, showcasing these beautiful fat characters taking up space in both everyday scenarios and in more dreamy ways, like a mermaid in a park pond. <laughs> what was it like seeing her art for the first time? 
did it match up with the images you had in your mind or far exceeded it? And do you have a favorite spread? Um, I remember exactly where I was the moment I saw her illustrations for the first time. I was standing outside my local bookstore um, and it was like this chilly autumn morning <laughs> and I just like broke down crying on the, on the sidewalk um, in front of, it was like the bookstore and then right next to there's a coffee shop with a full glass window. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just like having a breakdown in front of a bunch of strangers. Um, I, I think going back to the collaboration idea though, I, I didn't hold, um, like I definitely had like soft ideas when I was like creating images, but as far as specific art, I made sure to keep a loose hold on that because I wanted her work to be able to come through and shine. And it did. I now, when I talk about like people are always like, oh, well, how did you all find each other? And I explain the process of like Abrams, like matching us up. And I truly feel like the illustrator search was really just the process of finding uh, Sharzad because I can't imagine anyone else having created Francis the way that she did. So I would say definitely exceeded <laughs> my expectations. That is incredibly sweet to hear. The other thing that caught my eye is the way inclusion of all kinds is naturally woven into the illustrations. Readers may see people of many different skin tones in hijabs using mobility aids like wheelchairs and canes. What is something that Sharzad layered into the story? Um, or did it come in about a more organic way? Yeah, I think it's a combination. Um, my one art note that I had in the text was that when Francis and Baba are going through the park, they see people of all ages, ethnicities, abilities, portraying disability in the book was something that's very important to me, um, especially as I have gotten older and learned more about um, the fight for um, uh, fat rights, like the disability rights movement is so completely intertwined with this movement. And so it was really important to me that that be represented, even if in just a subtle way. Um, and I think this is something, you know, beyond that art note that we never, uh, had to necessarily discuss directly. I think we all just kind of had this understanding of we wanted this world to look like the world as it is. And um, for so many different kinds of people to have a chance to see themselves, whether they are a kid or whether they're an adult. Um, one thing that's interesting that I didn't explicitly mention in that note is age. And that is something that um, Shaz just like wove in uh, naturally. Um, I particularly, there is a um, an older woman gardening in the park in one of the spreads. And that's like one of, like the first time I saw that, that was just one of my favorite little details um, because I really like that the book shows that it's, you don't start stop being part of a community um, just because you age. And I think that is also part of the whole idea of fat people taking up space. So often as a fat person, it can feel like you are hyper visible and also invisible. And so I love that this really gives a lot of exposure to many different kinds of people. Also, I realized I forgot to say what my favorite spread was in the last question. And it's the one where Baba and Francis are swimming in the pond with all of the people and then also the mermaids. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And I have to agree with you that that is probably my favorite spread too. <laughs> So you've mentioned before how you hope this that this book starts cross-generational conversations or starts the process of self-acceptance for adults too. Though picture books are intended for young readers first, do you also hope that the grown-ups reading to children learn something from Francis as well? Absolutely. Um, I learned to read when I was really young. I was like two years old. And so I really sped past picture books when I was little. Um, and I wish that I hadn't. I wish that I had had an adult in my life who was like, no, these are still very worthwhile. And I came back to reading them as an adult. And now I am such an advocate for people reading picture books at all ages, um, especially because I think that, you know, sometimes, especially if you are having a really difficult time, you can't necessarily sink into a novel, <laughs> um, but you could sit down and go through a picture book in 10 minutes and feel a little bit restored. Um, and 
I, and then, so I hope that that happens for adults on their own. And we've already gotten some comments and feedback of people who bought it um, because they wanted to start unpacking these ideas. And this felt like a really accessible way for them. Um, but then of course, you know, such a big part of the picture book experience is read alouds and the like read along experience. And so I wanted adults who are reading this to see themselves too, especially because, you know, again, I didn't get these messages when I was little and there are so many adults who also didn't. And I think it can be really rewarding for adults to see themselves and to see themselves alongside their kids having a vibrant life. I think especially, you know, so often when people become parents, that is considered like the forefront of their identity. And so I love that we get to see all of these adults still doing fun things. And specifically with Baba, we get to see that like, he still loves swings and <laughs> just being at the park and exploring. Um, but of course, now he gets to have the additional uh, experience of sharing that with Francis. I'm so glad you say that about um adults being able to see themselves alongside children, particularly illustrations with it out, without it being like a big pointed out thing. So I'm glad you called that out. So what's next for you? If you don't have any big projects lingering on the horizon, what's inspiring you lately? Well, I am uh, in revisions for a YA fantasy novel um, that I'm hoping to turn into my agent really soon. Um, and then I also, outside of writing, I am Rick Riordan's uh, social media director. So um, you may have heard that Percy Jackson's being adapted into a TV show. And so I am I'm not working on the show directly, but uh, helping share all the news about it as it, as it comes out and, and also keeping everybody updated on the expansive Riordan verse on the book side. <laughs> so those are two things that I'm working on. And then um, I have been very uh, inspired by the changing of uh, spring to summer this year. For a long time, summer was like my least favorite season. And a few years ago, I realized that I was like actively um, like dreading what will be a quarter of my life when they all add up. So I've been really trying to embrace summer. And, um, and so I've just been really enjoying a lot of like the, the, the flowers and all of the like new animals and stuff that are coming out. I uh, live in Tennessee now, like right by the Smokies. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of like good nature. Um, and that's been just really, really nice to delight in. That is very exciting, both your projects and the fact that you potentially like summer more like <laughs> myself. It's a journey. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and insight. Our time together has flown by and it has been so wonderful chatting with you, Ashley. Thank you, you too. Thank you all in the audience for joining and listening in. We are so grateful for everything you do in your communities and how you connect them with stories. We hope you and your loved ones are safe. Continue taking care of each other.